Sık. Tezim nezimin Aşağıda eskiyin izin 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 Yes sir, yes sir. Up. So, what we have already discussed that what are the claims? Claims are the boundaries of the innovation. Or you can say contours of the right. So, they are the most critical part of the patent application and this is the invention. We are defining the boundary of the invention. It is like a property. Suppose you have a property. So, you have A side, B side, C side and D side. And no one can enter in your plot. Similarly, same thing in this, this part. In, uh, while defining, you are defining the boundary of the particular invention. So that no one should infringe your right. No one should make this particular product or use this process. So this is what the purpose of claim is. So claims, the first thing is they are they define the contour of rights, they are the they are they define the boundary of invention, whatever. Then unity of invention and clarity of specification. The one thing which is very important is when we talked about uh, we have said that there is a standard requirement that one invention, one application. Hence, so claim whatever claim you are claiming in a complete specification shall all relate to a single invention. Okay. Then there is another concept which is called single inventive concept. They say that if there is a group of invention which is linked so as to form a single inventive concept, then that is permissible. That is in one application, you can have one single inventive concept. Now, in, uh, in this regard, section 10.5 is important, which talks about the unity of invention. It talks about the claims or claims of complete specifications that relate to a single invention or a group of invention linked so as to form a single inventive concept. Shall be clear and second and shall be fairly based on the matter disclosed in the specification. So there are three main uh, things which come from it. First is either it should be single invention or a single inventive concept. Second, the claim should be clear. That is non-ambiguous. There should be no ambiguity. And second, second means precise. What is supposed to be described? That is the only thing which has been described. Only relevant thing has been described. Nothing else has been told. And last part is that it should be fairly based on the matter disclosed in specification. That means whatever you have disclosed, claim should be supported by this. Claim cannot have something which has not been disclosed. So what happens is if you have disclosed something in your specification and not claimed, it will not be considered as an invention. But whatever you have disclosed in the, in the disclosure, it will be considered as a public of the disclosure. So it can be used for other, uh, as a prior art for other uh, inventions. Now, second part, what you have not claimed. Suppose you have disclosed many things in the specification, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But in claim, you have only claimed A, B, C, D. E, F, G, you have not claimed. Then E, F, G is disclosed. We will consider E, F, G as a claim. Is disclaimed and a EFG will become a prior art, but not part of your invention because it is publicly disclosed in the disclosure. Okay. Now comes single inventive concept. How to define? What are the relationship? How a group of invention can be linked? How I will consider them as a single inventive concept? The simple thing is, suppose you are claiming a product. At the same time, you are also claiming a process specifically adapted for to manufacture that particular product. Then this is a single relative concept. For example, you are called, another is you are claiming for a process and you are claiming for an apparatus or means specifically designed for carrying out that process. Then that will also be considered as a single relative concept. Similarly, claim for product, claim for process or an apparatus which are specifically adapted same thing, the first two things which I have said, a combination of all two can be a single inventive concept. How? Okay. This cannot be generalized and there cannot be a single application is 
simple thing what is most important is we will see that unity between product and process claim requires that process inherently results in the product when the novel product is obtained by the claim process then only there is a unit that product is novel and it has been uh, and it is obtained by the claim process that is then only you can have both kind of a claims and it will be considered a single entity concept then since you need to be, uh, unity between process and apparatus or means requires that the apparatus or means having specially designed for carrying the process or at least one but without excluding any other possible so this is the play time where you might be uh, might not be considered as a that these are the same uh, these are the single inventive ones the most important thing if you have to understand single inventive concept is permitted if the invention cannot readily be covered in a single generic claim then yes that is a single inventive concept examples will be like Suppose you have a locking system which contains a plug and a socket. Then you can claim plug separately and socket separately. It will be considered as a single inventive concept. If one has invented a new kind of spray bottle, then a spray bottle itself is a product. How to, manuf uh, how to manufacture that spray bottle? That process will be also be a part of single inventive concept. And if you have device uh, made a device or an apparatus which can which will make that particular spray water that will also be considered as a part of single inventive concept. Similarly, a gene sequence you are going for, the gene sequence, you have to say gene sequence, method, antibody, or a kit made from that antibody, all can be part of one single application and that can be a single inventive concept. Similarly, in the drugs, drug modified drugs or uh, which has proved to be more efficacious than the known compound process of making the product as well as the formulation content in the drug A or B, both can be there. <laughs> as I told earlier, claim significance is, claim is a technical statement, claim is a legal, with having a legal effect, what is not claimed in claim is stands this claim and is and is open to public use even the matters disclosed is not description. Claim define the boundaries of legal protection sought by the patentee and form a protective defense around the invention, as I have told. Now it should clearly define the scope of invention, conciseness, preciseness, precision, and accuracy. This is the very important thing. See, your, your claim should be very clear so that everyone knows that this is the boundary which they do not have to cross. That's what it is. And now, whenever a claim is being evaluated, whether all claims are evaluated on its own merit. So, if one is considered invalid, does it make other invalid? So, each and every claim will have to pass all the requisite of an invention, and that's how it will pass. Now comes claims must not be too broad to embrace more than okay. what you have not. In fact, invented, you should not cover in your claims. So it should not be too broad, but it should not be too narrow that anyone can infringe in it, your claim cannot protect your invention effectively. So that's all. So too narrow and too broad. This is a difficulty in drafting claim. Uh, your understanding the broad and narrow is always with respect to the prior art. If there is a prior art existing, it should not be that broad that it should go cover a prior art. At the same time, it should not be so narrow that there is always a scope of creating an alternate of that your image. That's how we try to balance between the uh, bring the balance in the claim. Having many claims where each claim has a different scope allows a patent to have a legal title to different aspects of image. Now, what is the structure, which is most important? When you are drafting a structure, the structure of claim generally have a preamble, transition and body. Every invention when you are drafting a claim, first thing which comes is I or V claim, as the case may be. If there are more than one applicant, it will become V claim. Otherwise, I claim. Then. Claim should always start from the fresh base. 
Please remember in exam also you should start from the first page. Claim should start from a first page after the detailed description, not before that. After the detailed description of the invention and should be serially numbered. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It should be serially numbered. Each claim should be a single sentence. That means it should not be a paragraph. It can be a long sentence which looks like a paragraph but it should be a single sentence. That means there should be only one full stop. You start and you end. And in punctuation, you will use comma, semicolon, colon, everything. Then claim should be clear in second. I have explained that. Claim should not be verbose. That means you are using language more than what is necessary. So be specific. Use that language, which is specific, precise, and describes your invention perfectly. The claim should relate to a single invention or a single inventive concept. Same thing. No restriction as to how. You can define how many claims can you define. You can uh, draft as many claims as possible. As you, you can draft any number of claims. But the fee will start after 10 claims. You have to pay the additional fee as per the schedule one. And you have to calculate uh, more than 10, 11, 12, 30 per claim. There will be a fee. Accordingly, you have to pay. But what is the formula of deciding how many claims you should draft? The claim should be drafted as many as is required, not as many as you wish. This is how the claim should be, uh, should be drafted. Further, the claim should be fairly based on the matter disclosed in specification. Same thing. Then claim must be fully supported by the description. Yes, if they are not supported, then we will say that they have not been fully disclosed. So description, claim should be supported by description and whatever you have not claimed, uh, claim, what explained in that description will be considered disclaimed. And if not disclosed, the claim will be considered that particular invention was not disclosed. Two different things. Okay. So, that's how it is. The claim which is not supported by description will be, kind of, will be that it is not disclosed, disclosed and hence you will be asked to amend the claims to suit the disclosure which you have made. Now, further, a claim should be clear in the sense that it should not cause any speculation with respect to scope of any claim language. Now, for example, thin, strong, a major part such as when required any substantially this all have a subjective interpretation so for example you are using that an aqueous solution should be acidic acidic is a long range from here to here so a definite part will help you if you say ph more than ph uh, uh, less than ph7 or you come to between a ph between PS3 to 4, that will be acidic. That's all. You can do it. Now, for example, whenever use of systems are unavoidable, consider as clear and definite to a person still in the art, the same way we have a Fine. You should not use trademark in it. Again, same thing we are talking about is very specific, not vague, ambiguous, or hypothetical in nature. Any term which is used in claim must be found either found in description or fairly inferred from the description. That's how disclosure has to be done. Trademark, you please don't use trademark in the patent application. Then claim, again, it's talking about preamble, transitional phrase and body. This is the structure, we will discuss it again. Introductive phrase, we have told key. What is the preamble? Preamble is an introductory phrase, it talks about it defines what kind of invention it is. For example, it's a fertilizer composition you're talking about. It's a composition for fertilizing soil or fertilizer composition. If it is a device, you can always claim a device. Or a particular, uh, for example, we have discussed earlier, if a lawn mower you are playing, you can say a traveling lawn mower. This, uh, all those things, you can have a preamble. What is a transition? Transition phases are uh, which connects preamble and the body of the claim. So actually the 
field of invention generally is written in the preamble. Okay, that is related to this. For example, a machine for waxing a paper. This can be a preamble. A composition for fertilizing soil, that can be a preamble. Or as we are already discussed, we said a mosquito killing machine, killing device, mosquito killing device. That can also be a preamble. Then transition phrase may be words and phrases such as these are the words which are used. For example, comprising, including, consisting of, consisting essentially of. These are the transition ways which connects the body. We will come to that. Then there can be an invention when there is an improvement of a product or process existing in a prior art. Invention should be characterized as a feature wherein, wherein or characterized way. When you are explaining a function or any other feature, a particular thing, we use wearing or characterized way. I will discuss this characterized by wearing later when I will be discussing a different uh, type of claim. Then, first claim is always an independent claim. So, independent claim, as the name suggests, is the independent claim. It does not depend on anything, it is complete in its own. It does not need support from any other claim. So it will define the essential feature of a body, embodiment of an invention. Claim will be characterized with respect to prior art. So it will be properly differentiating from the prior art. All the technical features, all the elements should be present in this independent claim. When I say all the elements means all the essential element in the independent claim, they are present. There can be some elements which are optional or added, adding to it, right? You can add them or you can not add them. But your invention, uh, so that your independent claim will have all the essential elements and the dependent claims will either define or add the feature in this particular claim. In general, the understanding is for you know, layman language, the independent claims are generally not referring to any other claim in general. Right? So they don't refer to any other thing. Dependent claims are those who generally refer to an earlier claim and either define or add new feature to it. Now comes to this. So suppose there is a process and method, then there will be one independent claim for process, another will be for method, and then there will be other independent claim. Same thing is talking about a dependent claim device antecedents from an independent, independent claim and reads into the feature of independent claim and may contain option feature. The basic criteria is independent claim is the broadest claim. Dependent claim starts narrowing the invention. They will be describing the invention in more details and bringing the finer points and thus causing the narrowing of the claim which has been claimed uh, or the invention which has been claimed earlier. That's all. The claim shall not comprise number of alternative variables. So it should not be in such a well, now all this please read. One thing which is not allowed is 10.4c of the act says that you cannot provide indefinite type of claims. So it takes that you cannot, uh, the omnibus claims are like this, that an apparatus substantially as herein above described in the description with reference to a complete drawing. You are not drafting any claim, you are just referring to the entire disclosure or entire drawing. If you are doing this, then this is not a claim which will be accepted by the uh, examiner as it violates 10.4c, as it is not a definitive claim. No. Same thing, claim dropping. Ha, here one construct I have always asked, most of you also know that there is a difference between invention, embodiment, and the claim. What are the three, these three differences? The invention is nothing but a mental construct. 
which is inside the inventor. It does not have a physical substance. Embodiment, the moment you that mental construct is brought into a physical form, that becomes the embodiment. What is the claim? Claim is the description of the embodiment, which you are describing so that you understand what are the boundaries of that particular inventions are and what are the features of this invention is. Now, this same thing repeated again and again. So you can just read it. What is most important is while drafting, you have to avoid relative word, fast, slow, long, short, tall, wide, heavy, hard code. This you should not use. Exception is that if you are defining a relationship between two elements, then you can say the first piece is shorter than the second piece, that kind of. There you can use a relative word, otherwise don't use relative words. Then comes recognize what industry and dictionary, that is industry, for example, heavy water. Then there it has to be used. Then you should not use negative limitations that, uh, for example, you should not talk, uh, say that tar that is not solid. You should say that there is a hollow tail. Or, for example, you say a donut with a hole in the center of a donut. Instead of it, you can say a cylinder of dough having a hole in center there. Okay. So, same thing, there is a way of saying it in a different way. The most important part is we are not, we are drafting claim in a positive language, not in a negative data, negatively. We will not say it will not include, it exclude. Those words you will not use, not, will not be used. Then comes, when you are referring number of the components in an apparatus claim, suppose we have to say that chair will have, chair will have three, four, five, any. So you can say plural legs, chair will have plural legs. Plurality of the legs. Or if there are only two or uh, more than one, then you use at least one. If two or more, you use at least two or a plurality of legs. If it is one, then you use a single. That is preferred. Only one or single. This is how you use the words. Again, please revise this. And whenever you are drafting, go through this page again and again. I have tried to cover the general concepts in one place. Uh, every time you draft, if you go through this, you will remember what not to do. In initially, one, two, three exercises, you might need it. After that, you will not need it. Ha. Now there is a means for function. Means and function claim we would have. Heard. The thing is, when a particular device is not important, something. For example, you want to cut something, but that knife as a device is not important. The important, it can be cut by a knife, it can be cut by a scissor, it can be cut by a blade, anything can be used. So how will you expand this? So you will say cutting a material is more, what is more important here is function. Cutting a material, that function is more important than a particular device. Then you have to say means for cutting. If you have to suppose, you have to tie something out, you are nailing it, screwing it or gluing it, wow, whatever the measure is. The object is to attach something with something else, uh, with another thing. Then you use means for fast. So what you have done, you have broadened the scope. And now you understand that anything which is being used for fastening, whether a screw, whether nail, whether a glue, or I see it, it will be the means for fast. That's it. So focus is here that function is more important, not the device which is being used. If that is the case, use means for and describe the function. When an element or feature is introduced, this is very important. Please remember it. When you are introducing up anything first time, you use indefinite article that is A and that's it, A, N, or, and whenever you will refer it again, 
then it will you will use the said or that or also use but the please you stick to only the a and and the that's it don't use anything else then comes for example you want to use for then for sometimes we as a legalist we always use this it is adapted for adapted to it is not preferred use replace adapted to adapted for and use directly for okay now claiming of an alternative statements for example you have to claim more than one alternative how will you do that so uh, it is there is one example that uh, you want that either metal or plastic can be used so if you write only metal or plastic that a sack is made of or a bar made up of plastic metal or plastic if you are writing this that a metal uh, a bar made up of metal or plastic write it like this that a bar uh, um, made up of either metal or plastic if you are saying that either of one only one can be used if you are saying both can be used then you have said to write at least one composition selected from metal and plastic then you are covering metal plastic metal or plastic metal and plastic all scenarios okay this is the in general this is the format in which claim should be constructed there should be preamble then comma then transitional phrase should be there then column and then feature element a semicolon then feature b semicolon and then feature c and then full stop this is a sentence okay this is like this if i had it been written like this it would have been looked like a single sentence but we write it like this because it makes elements clear it helps examiner to understand the claims better and it helps you in identifying all the features of the invention easily and interrelating okay so this is how this format please don't forget this format preamble comma transitional phrase column feature a semicolon feature b semicolon and feature c this is how it is feature a b can be feature a b only there can be c d e f g whatever elements you have this is how it should be written now when you are identifying the preamble same thing preamble is the best source of title of invention you have to write the subject or field of invention it should most important thing what should be there is you have to tell whether it is a product or a process or an apparatus it should be very clear what you are claiming and whether it is a product process apparatus by reading it you should know okay then comes body body of claim is the legal description of the exact invention which is sought to be protected so in this you provide the parts steps chemicals how the interrelationships are there all that so this is the body okay this is body feature a feature b and features transitional phrases the link between introductory phrase that is preamble if i go by it and cover it like uh, let it be blue then this is the transitional phrase right So, in transitional link the introductory phrase to the body of claim. The transitional phrase typically indicates the function or intended result of the elements of the claim. So, see preamble, you identify, you use it. For example, if you are you are certain that the invention is related to cricket bat, you write a cricket bat. If you are saying that this is a composition, you write and it is it is a pharmaceutical value. You can write a pharmaceutical composition. Compound, right? 
you can go for fertilizer composition whatever it is whatever you are claiming claim it explicitly in the preamble and then transitional phrase will be like comprising consisting consisting essentially of all those things now transitional phrase there are two main phrases which should be used okay Transitional phrase that can be comprises or comprising. It will include the following. What does comprising means? Comprising is an open. Open ended means that you can, it, whatever I'm describing, it is fine, but anything else can also be there. So it's an open, it has a broader protection than consisting. Consisting is A, B, C. Then there can there is no scope of any D, E, F. That's it. What I have said, this is the only thing. So, hence, it is used mostly in the chemical fields. Otherwise, comprising should be used. Okay. Now, wherein? When should you use wherein? Wherein used to introduce a feature or characteristic of universal which is not a physical. When I'm not talking about a physical element of an invention, then it is called talking about where in right. feature and characteristic when I'm describing then I'm using the where in but it should not be a physical element of invention itself now generally consisting of is only essential elements of it Correct. Sir, comprising means sir? all the elements listed in claims are essential, but additional element may be present in the invention as well. This is comprising. Sir, figure two is that you have modified this particular thing to perform a particular function. When you are trying to introduce an element which is configured to perform a specific purpose, then you use configured to characterized by. This characterized by is when you are describing distinguishing feature of an invention that's actually proper prior or other invention. So the word where in improvement comprises or characterized in that. If these two are there, this is also called Jepson claims or a two-part claim here, in which it says that, for example, there is a device for measuring temperature. Then I'm talking about transitional element characterized by a sensor comprising a thermocouple and an amplifier circuit configured to amplify the output signal of the thermal. Characterized by you have used, that means this is an improvement on other devices of basic temperature. The so sensor comprising a thermocouple and amplifier circuit. Okay, so this is like this. In fact, you can always look like this right characterized via sensor comprising the couple and an amplifier this 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 if you are writing this this should have been like this and amplifier configured to amplify the output signal of the thermal. now this is a Jepson clip that means a prior art has been described and a distinguishing invention has been used so the word characterized by is present or wherein the improvement comprises or characterized in that all that can be used for example suppose you can have a single claim that single claim in there is a for example there is an invention here that there is a table and on the top of that there is a chess board uh, chess board is fixed so the table looks at a it acts as a table as well as a uh, chess board where you can play the chess you can describe it like this you can directly say a table comprising a top supported by the plurality of the legs and chess board set on the top of it okay or you can say a table comprising a top supported by plurality of legs this is a normal table so since it is an existing prior art, so i'm using a table comprising a top supported by a plurality of legs characterized in that or characterized by whatever you use 
this uh, this uh, color is visible, right? No, it's fine. A table comprising a top supported by a plurality of legs characterized in that a chess board is set into the top. So this is the improvement. This is the prior art. And that's how in two part claim I have claimed it. So this type of claim are also referred as a Jepson claim. When you are using a characterized Y, simple understanding, when I'm using a characterized Y, then I'm, I have to, I'm using that to emphasize some improvement over existing invention. Okay. That is, I'm distinguishing feature of the invention of prior art. How prior art is different? How it is different from the prior art when I'm trying to cover the improvement only, then I'm using this kind of it. Okay. Okay. Now let's a few concepts here. Product. Product refers to a physical object or substance that is subject of protein. Product can be a bicycle, chemical compound, a computer chip, anything can be a product. You all understand what product is. Process is also the way, the method or the series of steps which are being used to obtain a particular product or a result. That is a process. So it can be a manufacturing process of a product, method of conducting a medical procedure, a software algorithm, whatever. That kind of all those are needed. For example, tea is a product, and how to prepare a tea? There are those other methods. Then comes means. Means we have just discussed. When you are means often used in the context of describing a specific component or element of an invention, when the function is more important than the particular, for example, you don't want to use gold. That uh, something is fixed on a particular table with bolt. So what you are saying is that it is where it has been mounted by means for fasting. Or uh, uh, a means of means for fastening. Uh, this has been used. Uh, particular uh, vase. Suppose a vase is fixed on on a particular table. Then yes. A means of fastening the was. This is an other element which has been used. Now apparatus. An apparatus is a specific physical device or system that is used to carry out a particular function or process. Generally, it is a machine. When you are claiming a machine, physical device or system, then this is an apparatus. So you can say an apparatus for detecting the presence of particular gas or any other thing that is considered as a product. No? apparatus. In general, more or less, there is either a product or a process. That's it. So, if we focus on product or process, most of the problems are simplified. No. Independent claim, same thing again, it's talking about that it is the core, it is the principal claim, dependent claim. Yes. Dependent claims, the Thing is, when I'm talking a dependent claim or dependent claim government, why reference all of the structures of the claim which it depends. So what is happening is it's it has all the limitation which independent claim has plus additional limitations. Thus, dependent claim is not a self-contained claim. It refers again and again and it adds limitation to the report claim. There can be multiple dependent claims, and we will see. In our uh, when we will be looking into different type of uh, claims, so there can be multiple dependent claims. What happens is suppose you are referring not only to one claim, but you are referring one or two claims or more than one. So the device of claim two or three further comprise. So this is how multiple dependent claims are identified. If there are that this claim is dependent on not only one claim but more than one claims. One, two, three, four, any number of these can be there. Now, specific product types of claim and how they are structured are giving you. Product claim, this is a structure, how it will be like this. A device for 
whatever function you can write here. This becomes a preamble. Then comprise, come up, comprising of, then element A, then element B, then how it is related to element A and element C, how it is related to element B. That's how the entire product claim is like this. When comes method claims, elements are steps or sequences in process. So, most important part in method is after comprising everything is used like in JIRA, that is ING form is used. And the way it has been presented, it will be presumed that this is how, this is the first action taken, another action second, first step, second step, third step, that's how this will be presumed the way you have written it. So, for example, very easy. I am taking the example of tea. A method for making a tea, the method comprising boiling of water, then adding sugar to the boiling water, then adding tea leaves to the uh, boiling water to form a mixture, adding milk to the mixture and filtering the mixture. Remember ING part. If you are writing the first, all these will be in ING. ING form has to be used while describing the this method. So this is a key factor in when you are drafting a method claim. There is a preamble. This is a preamble. Then I'm again referring the method comprising. Okay. Then all this. Please remember these formats. This format will help you in drafting the claims. Then comes, suppose there is a product by process claim. What is the product by process that you are actually claiming the product, right? Your invention is a product, but you are saying the product which is manufactured by using this process, only that product is my claim, nothing else. So this is how it is, a composition prepared by a process. Now comprising of a step, A step, B step, C. Okay. Then comes Marcus type claims. Marcus type claims are very uh, simple. See, once you have read Jepson. Jepson means Jepson. Uh, you can relate it like son. The son is an improvement over father. So Jepson. So you will remember that. If there is a characterized by an improvement you are using, so that kind of claims are considered Jepson claim. Marcus. Marcus claims are those in which you have to select from a particular group. There are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. If, if you are using selecting from, selection, selected from some that group, then that is considered as a Marcus type claim. So you are using this kind of language will be present. Wherein element A is selected from group consisting of X, Y, Z. So generally in a chemical structure it happens. This is how you, it will be written, the process of manufacturing of dyes, which comprise coupling with a halogen substituted pyrazole, a dye as a type of sulfonated material selected from the group consisting of. This word will then be there. If it is there, this is a Marcus type claim. But no one is asked, going to ask you what Marcus type claim is in general. You have to draft. But for your understanding, analyze homologous, this is how Claims are drafted, wherein particular element is selected from the group consisting of this, this, this. This, this will give you a Marcus type claim. Now comes the means plus function claim. You can also go for, see here I am not defining the element. I am defining element in the form of the function it will be performing. So what we are saying, an apparatus for cooking rice comprising a means for holding rice and a heater configured to heat the rice holding. This is how you use configured to and the comfort means okay, both examples are here. When you are reading any patent claim, please try to identify the structure based on the this understanding, preliminary understanding which you are reading here. Because the language of it is like you cannot start writing essays without reading literature first. You have to read first. You have to understand, uh, uh, get a vocabulary. 
you should know in what context what is being used unless you do that you cannot be a good drafter so you are supposed to read as many claims possible so that you understand what should be used how a particular thing can be claimed so that it is strikes in your mind yeah, if i write it in this way this will be a better way of exp uh, expressing myself expressing my invention and getting a product claim so this i have explained that invention is a mental construct inventor embodiment physical form of invention is suppose there are e1 e2 e3 these can these three forms of invention will be considered as different embodiments and claim will be description of embodiment all embodiment will be explained so claim will have all those things now how you draft first step is identify the element of the invention second step is identify the interrelationship of the elements then you check if there are structural elements or means which are necessary and then go for the reference number okay so when i'm talking about the identification of the element for example there is a gadget what will you do so this one two three i have just written it in reality it should be like this you will start it with this you started you found that there is a gadget okay and these three elements okay first you identify the element now what you are identifying how these connected you want these interrelated with a so you write you identify this relationship and return it here so that's how it becomes interrelated with a then c is interrelated with b then if i'm saying interrelated with b oh what we have described we have i have also said c is also connected with a in that thing i have described right had i not said c interrelated with b then a b interrelated with a and c then uh then this is not correctly described the element is not properly connected so if an element is not properly connected your claim is not properly drafted you are talking about an aggregation not a complete embodiment so you should always remember that i am claiming a combination i am not claiming an aggregation a plus b plus c is an aggregation a b c where b is related how the relationship of b with a and c is highlighted then yes you have claimed a combination so a gas then you have to comprise i will go by this gas it comma comprise and a is it this this means this now you saying reference number reference number is if there is a diagram used and a has been given one number when you can write one number here if reference diagram has not been used then you don't have to write any reference number here so if reference number are given then you have to write same numbers have to be repeated b is 2 then b is 2 c is 3 then c is 3 this is how your independent claim will look like okay interrelated with and more important suppose you have this you are saying how the interrelation is here then you are saying interrelated with a1 means interrelating the uh, the element which is connecting b and a will come here means interrelating a1 with b2 c3 means interrelating c3 with a3 this is our case so this is like this a b c in between a and c there is a some means by which they are connected okay that's okay. so this is how a um, more or less a structure will look like 
when I'm talking about interrelationship, what do you mean by interrelationship? Interrelationship it can be, for example, by any connection. That is, uh, there is something which is mounted on something, uh, mounted on another thing. So this is mounted on. And this, uh, even when it is mounted, it is rotating. So you can well say rotatively mounted on. So this is one type of connection you can say. Or you can say fixed, that this is fixed. The connection can be static, because they can be movable. If movable, you can always say rotatable. Then fixed, that this is fixed too. For example, something, an oh, example in the, uh, we were taking table and was. If a was is fixed, you can say was fixed on the table. This is means for fixing. Was fixed, uh, was fixed with the table where with the means fixing the A with B. Uh, was on the table. That's how you create the interrelationship. Now, second part is relative. Relative is position is that uh, an example is element A uh, is being disposed above element A. This is how it is written. There, there is no connection, but one is above, one, on, one is on the border. Then that, that has can be defined. That is also an interrelationship. Then comes setting forth another is that is how it is connected to it. Uh, if new means is there, then yes. So, mota pota, aapko ye wala aapko kar hai. Ki gazette comprising an A, B, C and means. I will just show you how it, how will you identify all this in the examination paper. In practical, then you will have better sense. Then we are talking about dependent claims. Dependent claims have two functions. Either they add structure, or define in a structure. Adding a structure is when there is an element option. Suppose in this example, gazette has a D as an optional element. So you are right. You will write as this. The gazette has claimed. The gazette is the preamble. You are reviewing this. Uh, you are reciting the entire preamble here. The gazette, and then you are talking as claim D, claim one, claim two, claim three, wherever it is. Then further comprising. The moment you have used further comprising. It, it becomes what? You are adding the structure. Further comprising A. This is first time you are introducing D. So you are using a D interrelated with the A. Here, since A has already been used here, now it should be the. Further comprising a D interrelated with the. Okay. Now, suppose there is a structure which has to be defined. If you are dividing, so you are taking where in. The gazette has claimed in claim one, same term. Instead of using further comprise, you will use where in. Because now you are defining the structure. Where you are saying where in, the element B comprises of, again, see, and because first time I was introducing E and N, F interrelated with the C. Okay. So this is the element B. The C. This is how your punctuation, the grammar will work. This is how you should write. Then becomes the dependent claim. Okay. So this is all theory. Doesn't help you. Okay. Let's go and see it in practical. I'm using this example, question 8. It's an easy example and it's easy for me also to show you. So this is an invention which is used in 2016 exam. 2016 exam. Um, then for question 8. This is the Entire question which is here. So we are using twenty sixty paper and how we will be attempting it, that's what I'm 
trying to say. See, is both papers are visible to you easily? Yes, sir. Okay, you can read here also, here, there, no? Both sides, no? Okay, fine. See, we start re started reading the paper. The invention is generally related to the field of formulation and use of fertilizer composition for agricultural use. More in which are to fertilizer that contains this much is what? You all have read it, no? What we are getting from this line? Field of invention. Okay. Now, we are talking about disbalanced and hydrosis, the single most important plant nutrient has been overused in modern agriculture. What of this is this? What are we getting here? Problems. Background, sir. Background of the invention. Yes, the problem actually. The problem statement is that this 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 is the problem which are found in. Now. Again, what is this? Which you, what are you getting here? Objective of the invention, right? That what this invention wants. It wants a, a, a fertilizer composition which will be used at a minimum application rate and which will not degrade or adversely affect the soil ecosystem. Correct? So your objective is also here. Still, you have not got the invention. You are still searching for the invention and in their elements. Okay. Again, it is talking about the background. Prior art exclaim, but no mention is being used. Other non manure organisms are indicated. Broad list of organisms is claimed in, which includes best levels. Just simply list all the genera. Okay. So, all this is talking about what? There is a great but here after, uh, here to for unmet worldwide need that permits lower use of. So what is talking about that? That this is also an objective and he's getting his lower use of rate of nit nitrogen. The present invention provides such technology by combining unique ingredients, processing them in such a way to arrive at the potential fertilizer composition. Till this, you have not found the invention yet. The novelty of present invention relates to specific synergism between the various ingredients and the process of technology and such ingredients. Which, okay. Again, we have not found the invention yet. We are reading. In accordance with the present invention, now, the moment it says fertilizer composition that contain, now he is describing his elements. This line is describing the element. Start it. Fertilizer composition that contain viable baseless bacteria and decontaminated animal manure. Optionally, this is the additional one. Please see. These formulation prefer uh, preferably also contain humic acid and BK substance where where N means nitrogenous, this, 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 P indicates phosphorus. Okay. More specifically, the invention concept composition comprising at least one species of. Okay, so let's start with this. The moment you got it, you write it in a rough phase, what you are doing. The first thing is, this is a fertilizer composition, it will become your preamble. Then you have identified one element is viable bacillus bacteria. Second is decontaminated animal manure. Okay. So these are the two elements of the invention. Okay. Then you are saying there is an optional elements, which are those. He's talking about this. Okay. Optionally, these formulation preferably also contain. It can be humic, humic acid and NPK substance. These two can be optional. That's what they are talking about, right? So, these two are essential elements. These are going to be 
extra elements which can which should be which can be added now let's further read we have gone to this more specifically the inventor from the composition comprising at least one species of probiotic bacillus bacteria okay so there is using that viable bacillus bacteria now since i'm writing i will try to write the Anything which is necessary for bacillus bacteria, any adjective, anything which is being used in one place, probiotic bacillus bacteria. Now, is that a positive effect on this? Is a use. You don't have to use anything in the claim. We don't have to describe that. Is that a positive effect on yield of agent plant and reduce the nitrous of all this? And anyone with that has been decontaminated to reduce the concentrated shun of undesirable microorganisms. So this is the purpose of getting it decontaminated. We don't need to write this purpose. Anyway, I have identified decontaminated animal value. So I'm not worried about it. Let's go for a second. Then he says, that's the first aspect of invention is a fertilizer composition. See, now the moment I'm talking of comprised, what I'm using is transition, transitional, uh, 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 transition word now. We were saying comprising, consisting of. Now, whatever he is talking about is actually he is defining this, his claim here, and this is how you write a claim in running format. See, when I say claim is written in a running format, it is written in a running format. This is what you had already identified, and this is what it is written. Fertilizer composition for plant production comprised of. Decontaminated manure, bacillus spores, and preferably humic acid, and optionally one or more. Right? All the elements which you identified, he has written it here. If you write it, if you want to uh, claim, draft a claim now, you can simply write the, uh, a fertilizer composition or plant production. Comma, comprising this decontaminated manure, semicolon, delete and bacillus spores, preferably humic acid, this you can take out. This is your first claim. You got it, right? Because your elements are there. Then comes second part. And say again, same thing you copy. This is the preamble you have taken from the of plant production as claim need claim one. There in not very further comprises of done it becomes your second claim. first independent claim and second this since there is nothing use and this is how your claim has come Right? Your structure is followed. Now it looks like the claim, how it should be drafted. Fertilizer composition of plant production, then using comprising, then decomposed in manner, and this list goes done. Claim of plant production, claim claim one, further comprising, uh, further comprising. Of images. Now, See, more or less, you are very close. Now, it says one or more of N compounds, P compounds, combination of two or more of these compounds. Okay, let's read further. For example, two N compounds, N compounds, this preferred composition are those wherein ingredients are blended into a mixture resulting in granule pore. Okay. Other preferred compounds are those blended into a mixture resulted in a powder product. Okay. Preferably the ingredients, you can 
All right, preventing areas are formed into hot appliances that decontaminated manure is preferably derived from the manure selected from group consisting chicken or soy milk. See. Okay. This is what this is again a description of how decontaminated manure is being derived. So you can always write a fertilizer composition for plant production as to in claim one, where wherein the decontaminated uh, manure is derived from manures selected from the group consisting chicken or swine manure. This is your third claim. Still, you can go on. Other preferred composition in which are those wherein vessels goes off from the stage of probiotic vessels area capable, capable of enhancing beneficial microbial. See, now the problem here is instead of this, you can always use probiotic vessels for sales. Right, because they have not emphasized much. But let's go for another thing. Preferred the given as a total aerobic facultative plate count reduced to this is all this can also be used as a dependent claim. The decompromer has a total aerobic facultative weight. This is this compared to raw manure because it's again describing the manures value. So you can write a fertilizer composition of this, this, where in the decompensative manure. manure where the decontaminated manure has a total error. That's it. Okay. So there are various claims which are here. You can see this. Now, define one thing is defining here. Yet another preferred composition was are those wherein the humic acid is derived from the lignite. Comprising of humic acid, you can directly right here mm -hmm. this is what we are doing here first thing we are trying to identify all the elements and then after identifying the elements what we are trying to do is we are trying to do is there any feature of the particular element which has to be explained separately. Then we are claiming that in a dependent way. For example, humic acid which should be derived from lignite. So this is what it is. You can take it out and claim it in a another dependent claim wherein the humic acid is in. That means here humic acid can be derived from anything that is another embodiment where humic acid is being derived from lignite only. That's what they are saying here. Then comes here. We have not used this end compound yet. We have to draft that. Okay. Humic acid means this, this, this. Now he's talking about humic acid. This, this is not needed for you. You leave this because this is a primary. As seen in the appearance, not all humic acid is sister and performance. Yeah. Now this is another thing here. And here to see exactly the language of. is written. Because the moment you see where in, please remember you can use that language. Where in selected from the group. Marcus clip, right? So you see,
done. If you can identify the elements and the components and the, uh, as well as the uh, language which you can use from them, the paper, uh, paper which has been given to you, it will be easy for you to draw it. See, the best part of the exam is they have given you everything. We are not drafting it from any scratch. Generally, at present, they are giving you a already drafted disclosure or uh, specification. In that specification, you have to identify where the invention is written. And so if, if you identify that invention, you have to only put that element and invention uh, elements and all that in the structure, which is an acceptable structure. That's it. So I, at present, the drafting is identifying the elements of invention and presenting it in the format which is preferred for the claims. That's it. So fertilizer composition of polymerase claim in where the end compounds are selected from the group consisting of this. P this and this. This is the entire dependent length finished. Done. Again, same thing. Where the decomponent manual has this viable component, this you go and you write this here. You can always write a fertilizer composition for plant production as claimed in claim one to four, either of the claims or any of the preceding claims, wherein and then you write this decomponent manual because that's what it is we are talking about. So, this is how you will. Okay. Hope this has this was a little helpful to you. Okay. Now, question here is even after 2016, this was easy. 2016, 2018. They don't give you exactly like this now. For that. I am going to give you 2022 paper. Okay. The questions are little, little different. It will be a little tough for you to identify. See, there too you got from the language that this is the claim, this is how we have to write. Now you cannot identify that in this when you go for 2022. So in 2022, but your exercise is same. You have to identify the invention elements the other parts of the invention and then you will be fine. See, if you read this, it talks about daclofenac is one of the most widely used non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs due to its smart pharmacology activity. Then we're talking about hypochicocyte and is talking about that this is a muscle relaxant anti-inflammatory agent. Now it says that daclofenac is unstable in a solution. So liquid formulation of that needs a stabilizing agent. Further, it again talks about another background where it talks about the aqua solution, this uh, of containing this, this, this. The chemical stability has to be obtained by adding a reducing agent. So, so what is a stabilizing agent here? Sulfide. Or sodium bisulfide, cysteine, and blah, blah, blah. Then it's talking about that this chemical stability is further improved by the presence of lidocaine. Lidocaine is what? It is again in addition to reducing. So, till he is not defining this. This. Now he is defining his invention. When preparing a liquid composition containing this, the inventors of present have found it is necessary to overcome a number of technological difficulties. So this is the problem they face. The most important require, uh, re requirement being to prevent the degradation of our both. So what is happening is the problem is that active ingredient that is that daclofenac or hydrochloricoside. If I am preparing a liquid composition. There is going to be a degradation of either diclofenac or thiacolchicoside or both. So this is a problem, and that's why a drug with a combination of both is not being formed. So what should I do? So they have said to, to stabilize sodium bisulfide and blah blah blah, but it's not helping. Same thing is thiacolchicoside is also not helping. Now they said that the addition of thiacolchicoside to a formulation coding makes use of maturity problematic. Still, you have not got the 
invention. Read on. If not possible, as they are present, the solution causes single degradation. This. And then we are going to say this, 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 this. Now, this is saying BHA is mixture. Now, the present invention solves the technical problem of stability. Now, our composition goes by. Accordingly, the composition of invention contains terbutyl or hydroxy xylosol BHA as an antioxidant. Then it says that the phoenix preferred presenting composition as sodium salt. Now you start identifying the element and do this here. What you have identified is first identifying the element. Diclofenac. Okay, it's not visible. See, here we are talking about the present invention. Diclofenac is preferably present in the composition as sodium salt. Right? Sodium salt. Then, for pharmaceutical use, there can be excipient suitable, which can be used. Manitol and sorbitol can optionally use. So, you got what? These two are the preferred ingredients because of which all the drama was being happening. But without this, it's not getting solved. So there is this. So these three are the essentials. Without this, invention is not there. Then this is the optional. Okay. So you can now claim it like this: a pharmaceutical composition in form of aqueous solution. Because that's what they are talking about. Consisting of. I'm using consisting of because because this is. A chemical invention. Diclofenac and thiocolchic acid are the pharmaceutical active ingredients and as a stabilizing agent. This is my first clue. Then again, a composition is claimed in claim consisting of sodium salt or diclofenac because it says that sodium salt or uh, diclofenac sodium salt is preferable. Then again, I, will, I can write it similarly one or two, wherein the aqueous solution consisting of mixture of propylene glycol and the water, which is written here. In one embodiment, the aqueous solution consists of mixture of water and glycol. Okay. So, this is how you have to try to identify the elements and work upon it. Though sometimes it will be easy for you to identify it. And sometimes it will be a little difficult. Must focus on the words comprises, consisting, including, having. Okay, when someone is talking about having, then he is going to describe the element. So all those things, wherein, if those words are being used, you are very near to the element, look for the element. Okay, this is a trick. This is not the absolute method, but this is a trick. He, okay. If this is there, then obviously there should be some element present. Okay. So use this to read faster and identify the element faster. And if you start using this method and practice for five or ten times, it will be more than enough for you to identify the element faster in the exam and use the exam questions itself. You go and practice. This is a fun activity. You can do it on your own. See, I am sitting here giving myself a 30 minute time or within 10 minutes, I have to identify the elements. That's it. I'm not writing any claim, nothing. My focus is I will identify all the elements of the invention, which is written in this paragraph, as well as the relationship between each and every one and identify which lines are very essential for the identification of the, element, uh, of the element or drafting of my claim. If you do this simple exercise, I don't think you should have a problem in identifying the exam, uh, elements in the exam. Okay. So please do this. Okay. Uh, it will not take more than 10 minutes. With the stopwatch, use stopwatch and Within 10 minutes to it because 
not more than 10 minutes, you will get there to identify the level. So 10 minutes is the key. Within 10 minutes, you have to identify the uh, invention. Then you have to go for drafting, abstract writing, title writing. And if it is a entire specification drafting question, then the yes. You have to write the entire specification also. So focus on identifying the invention ASAP. Okay, now I will just show how if you go to others, I will now rush just to show you. This is not how you should draft an application. This is an example. This application is not drafted by a patent agent. This is drafted by academicians. And this draft itself shows that they don't know how to do it. So why I'm showing it that if you are doing it the first time, your draft should not look like this. So the field of AI ERP software package is rapidly growing area that is going to universalize. I am talking of entire field of AI based and just see ERP system and the key benefit, everything I'm writing here. Background of invention, invention of AI based ERP software for manufacturing is builds a long standing practice of ERP system to manage production process. They are writing the research paper, they have not written anything. Now, go further. Okay, summary of invention AI based ERP software for manufacturing is reversing technology that aims to transform the manufacturing base. The software utilizes machine learning algorithm. Machine learning algorithm, computer research, natural language processing to automate and optimize various subsets of manufacturing process. Where is the invention? The software is designed to highly scalable and adaptable to meet the unique. This software is except this invention which they are claiming AI based ERP software. That is not defined anywhere. They have not even talked about it. They have talked about what it uses, but they are not defining how it works or what are its elements. Nothing is here. Benefit is there. So this diagram is also there. But nothing has been changed. We claim the AI based ERP software is a highly more innovative and novel technology. Tell me, how many of you can understand the element from here? Is there any element? So, sir, itself it is non patentable thing because it is software. No. So, the problem is there is no invention, what will you patent? There is no boundary. There is no boundary. What will the objection will come? The objection will come. The claim is not definitive. Claims are not clear. What are you claiming? Since you are not claiming anything, what? Where should I search? See, it's talking about farm money making is a highly innovative novel technology that is capable. This is a general statement. There is no element. There is no product. There is no process which you are claiming. There is an advantage. What are you claiming? All the advantages of software, which software? Which you have not described. They are saying software is designed to highly flexible and adaptable. How? Nothing is there, right? So this is nothing but an essay. No, sir, yeah, software itself is non-patentable according to Indian law. If it is not uh, with uh, some attachment with hardware. So whatever they have claimed first line itself, will they will get the objection. Correct, but the first thing uh, I'm not talking about software. Software can be uh, can be mm. software per se is not patentable, but software interacting with hardware Hard is patentable. Mm. Okay, with the hardware you can if you are claiming its interaction with the hardware, it can be patented. The problem here is the way it has been drafted. First, though, it is not following any format, and if you read it, it's nothing but an AC. Such kind of claims will get you nowhere. That's why. Please don't drop this kind of claim should be like this. Um, if I will be circulating these claims to you for your understanding. Uh, okay, see, this is a composition claim. A ready to mix powder milkshake composition comprising. Now they are writing everything here. 
milk powder then in an amount in range this to the weight of this this c understand composition they should have used comma that would have made it better but no problem preamble and then comprising semicolon uh, so column and then semicolon 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 all the elements have been described the in all the composition means including the binding agents see all this is done this is the entire composition of the milk seed then further says where the set dry powder source is selected from the this is again saying how i will select the citrus juice dry powder amla juice and spread right of the orange juice this is a very simple invention with respect to composition please read it and you will understand that how to use where in how to use selected from the group consisting of you will also understand uh, the how all elements can be provided in a composition plane right again a composition this is a composition of solid organic fertilizer if you read this it says we claim composition of fertilizer wherein the solid contains this 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 from this 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 then method in method what are they claiming where the method is a four stage process which are as follows so i'm not saying the best uh, this is the best way but yes whatever they are claiming the structure they are following stage one stage two stage three this is how they have described then they are again describing the where in the preparation and blah 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 all those things are here right see method of the claim steps we are describing i have to say collecting monoester collecting leaves collecting this there should be ing format should be used that's what they are doing then comes claim this this you already have this entire patent so a carrying one based mosquito attractive killing device this is the preamble till this for indoor use consisting of now this is first element caravanic of address suction fan 2 and see they are referring the reference number here okay and collecting tray all assembled inside the main unit this is the relationship characterized in that caravan characterized in that caravan evaporation device is placed away from the line of axial suction fan what is this doing that all this may be present in the prior art also but this is the improvement. The caramel pressure is placed away from the line of axis of the suction fan at a certain height. This is the format of a gypsum claim. This is a two part claim. Okay. So, this is how, please read it. Try to understand the, the language and the words being used. Identify that so that you can also use those languages or identify the same language in the paper also right so you have to identify the elements and write a claim so all this will help you please go through this now this is an apparatus claim same thing for moving a gas cylinder where in this is the preamble then it comes the where in the apparatus comprises fine all of um, you can have you should not write where in then also it is an apparatus for moving a gas cylinder the apparatus comprises khatam. or comprising it, had you written this for moving a gas cylinder why they are using again an apparatus because they have used this object so they don't want to confuse you with a gas cylinder that's why they are again using apparatus great because you, you will say okay, gas cylinder comprises no so for removing the doubt they have used an apparatus uh, wherein the apparatus comprises. Had they used to remove the wherein the apparatus comprises, that would also have done. Then hollow outer column, blah, 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 grab hook, inner shaft. See, everything is comprising a handle. They have defined this element here in the outer column comprising a handle at a top portion of hollow outer column for moving the gas cylinder. A grab hook to collapse an upper circular handle of the gas cylinder. Right? And then an inner shaft provided the hollow out again a correlating element A, element B. Right. So this is how you claim or your ABC should be interrelated, and their interrelation should be in the independent claim so that your claim is not an aggregation but a 
combination. Read this also. This I will be sharing. This is how to separate half. See here. This is a better way of writing what I was saying. An apparatus to separate hull, hull shaft from paddy rise, comma, the apparatus comprise. Not where in the apparatus comprise. Why am I using the apparatus again? Just to separate, uh, just to say that you are not confused with the paddy rise. That's why, nothing else. And this is how everything is there. This is a one big claim. Now comes the space mounts. Again, you see. Right. You might find that uh, not sometime there is a variation in the uh, format, but you don't have to follow this format. You have to follow only one format. I claim uh, preamble transitional phase, then go for all those uh, body. Nothing else. Don't do anything else. You will lose marks. Same thing is composition and all those has been done. Okay. So all this is I have explained. Brought up discussed the things done. Fine. So I'm 